Hello, my friends. My name is Ryan Freeman. Welcome to my life and welcome to another poetry video. This time it is a poet from Old England from the 17th century. His name is Robert Herrick. And the title of the poem is very enticing. It is To the Virgins. To the Virgins. All right, so it is four stanzas long. I am going to read you the poem, um, and then I will analyze it and talk about the feelings and the images that it brings to me, also the thoughts that I have. Um, as with anything, it's only my opinion, so if you disagree, that's fine. Whether you agree or disagree, put your comments down below. Let me know that you watched it. Let me know that you liked it. Share this video if you can, and I'll be most appreciative. Here we go. To the Virgins by Robert Herrick. Gather ye rosebuds while ye may. Old time is still a-flying. And this same flower that smiles today, tomorrow will be dying. The glorious lamp of heaven, the sun. The higher he's a-getting, the sooner will his race be run. And nearer he's to setting. That age is best which is the first when youth and blood are warmer, but being spent the worse and worst. Times still succeed the former. Then be not coy, but use your time, and while ye may, go marry. For having lost but once your prime, you may forever tarry. That was To the Virgins by Robert Herrick from the 17th century. I believe it was written in the 1640s, in case you care. So back then, I believe the world was a little bit more religious. I might be wrong. I'm not an expert in history. But throughout time that we know, throughout history, there were many people saving themselves. They were virgins. They didn't want to give their body to the central delights of another sex until they were married. Um, and, uh, that had its own religious significance, but, um, Robert Herrick is giving them advice, perhaps that they don't get from their priest or their preacher or their, uh, rabbi or what have you. So we're going to go through it. The first line, I think you've probably all heard, gather ye rosebuds while ye may. Gather ye rosebuds while ye may. I've heard this a million times. I had no idea that it came from this poem. And what does that mean? You know, rosebuds, it's a beautiful, uh, beautiful object in life. And gather them. Because why? Roses are temporary, right? Flowers are temporary. Old time is still a-flying, right? Time doesn't stop for anyone. That clock keeps moving. The sun or the earth keeps revolving around the sun. Um, time doesn't stop. We get older. We do not uh, freeze and have innumerable amounts of hours to do whatever we want. So old time is still a flying. And this same flower that smiles today, tomorrow will be dying. So the flowers that are smiling at you, and it could be a, a flower um, in the literal sense, or it could be an opportunity, or it could be a person in your life um, you have some beautiful thing in your life that's smiling today, that looks enticing, that looks beautiful, that looks like something you want to engage in, but tomorrow we'll be dying, we'll be gone, right? We all have a limited amount of time. Even the most beautiful girl that you know of in your life one day will wither and die. Um, opportunities, companies, everything goes, right? So gather ye rosebuds while ye may. In that first Stanza, second stanza, the glorious lamp of heaven, the sun, the higher he's a getting, the sooner will his race be run, and nearer he's to setting. So beautiful imagery um, referring to the sun as the glorious lamp of heaven, and right, it sheds light like a lamp, and it's in heaven, right, heaven, which is the stars and the sky. Now he's getting higher, but when the sun gets higher, that means he's getting closer to finishing his race. The sooner will his race, the higher he's at getting, the sooner will his race be run and nearer he's to setting. So it looks glorious to see that lamp of heaven, 
but realize that you have a limited time with the sun. And although it's shining really brightly at its zenith at the very top, that means he's getting closer to finishing and he will go down, the light will diminish, and your day will be done. And you can use that as the imagery for a day because we live by days. Um, what you do today, you might do nothing today and you might feel like you wasted it or you might do a lot and you feel like you really live that day. And so this stanza is a reminder that there's only so many hours of sunlight, but you can also use that to extend that as this an extended metaphor for your life, right? You, your the day of your life. The su it could be your youth. Um, it could be lots of different things. You only have a limited amount of time in the day, as with life. And the third stanza: That age is best, which is the first, when youth and blood are warmer, but being spent, the worse and worst times still succeed the former. So he is saying the best time of your life is the first time. That age. You know, when youth and blood are warmer. So you will enjoy this life. You will enjoy there are various ages, right? You'll have your baby age. You'll have your adolescence. You'll have all of these different periods of your life. And what he is saying is that um, the best age is when your youth and blood are warmer. Um, and you'll find this not just with Robert Herrick's uh, ideas, but you'll find this in in you know lots of literature and and even people around you a lot of people wish they were younger right i wish i was 21 i wish you know because when you're young and he uses the images of your youth and blood are warmer the warmer right that heat that fire and sure enough you see young people are passionate it's young people that are often trying to change the world it's young people that are dancing longest on the dance floor it's young people that have the new ideas. It's young people that are making love 10 times a day, right? So um, just remember, you know, uh, <clears throat> now for those of us who have passed that age, this is what he says, but being spent, the worst and worst times will succeed the former. So even if you're not in the warmest part of your life, what he, what Robert Herrick is saying, time, the worst and worst times will succeed the former. So. Although this is worse than when we were 21 or 18, whatever, it's going to get worse. So that still means, like, just enjoy yourself, right? Um, because it's your, your blood's not going to get warmer, okay? So while you still have a little fire inside you uh, to make love or to dance or to travel or to make YouTube videos, do it, right? Because we have limited time. So it's also a call to artists, I believe, you know, because if you're an artist out there and you're waiting for your creativity to ripen or you're waiting for uh, a reason or for a retirement, listen, your blood is warm. Now, if it's got some warmth, use it, whatever. You can use it for various things, sports. You want to start a sport? Don't wait till you're older. You want to start an instrument or a language? Don't wait till you're older. Do it now. All right, last line. Then be not coy, but use your time. And while ye may go marry for having lost, but once your prime, you may forever tarry. So be not coy. Coy is that person who's pretending to be shy, but they're really enticing. That's how we use it today. I did read that historically it, it meant reserved or shy. But regardless... What Robert Herrick is telling to the virgins, the virgins who are pretending maybe they have a fan over their face if they're from Asia or Japan or they're whatever, they're, they're guarding their sanctity, the sanctity of their body if they're real virgins and pretending to be shy, but they're really enticing other men. And there's something to that, right? There's a lot of guys who do prefer virgins. Um, so they're using their virginity as a way to, to entice men. But what he's saying is, don't be coy. Use your time. Like, you're, you're, your blood's hot. And while you may go marry, stop being coy and enticing these guys or being shy from these people. Go marry, right? And this is for, this is for virgins specifically because they're not enjoying perhaps the greatest pleasure in existence, which is the pleasure of making love. Um, there's lots of great pleasures in the world, but the pleasure of making love with another, especially someone that you love, two bodies intertwined that come as one, and, and you know what I'm talking about if you've been there. Sometimes it's a disaster, but when it's done right, it is amazing. 
Um, and virgins don't get to experience that, right? Because they're being coy. So be not coy, use your time, and while ye may go marry. For having lost but once your prime, you may forever tarry. So if you wait too long, you will lose your prime. You may forever tarry. You don't pluck that flower, that rose, at the right time. You come back a week later, a few days later, and it's starting to wilt. Unfor I'm not, not unfortunately, it is just a fact of nature that we also go past our prime. Like, I do jujitsu, but I'm, I just turned 39. Right, I'm past my physical prime. Hey, but I'm going to do it now rather than wait 10 more years till I'm 49. Um, I do wish I did it in my prime. Same thing for the virgins. If you wait too long to get married, you're saving yourself for sex, and then suddenly you wait until you're 35, and maybe you can't even have children now. Maybe you don't actually enjoy sex with a full passion. Um, there's a lot of women today, uh, a lot of men today, um, that wait to get married. Um, I waited to get married. And then you lose the opportunity of being a young father or starting your family early. Um, sometimes there's reasons for that. So, you know, obviously anyone's advice, anyone's thoughts, you always have to uh, think about it critically for yourself and whether or not you actually agree with it and whether or not it actually holds any value for your life. But I think, um, you know, you want to open that bottle of wine at the right time with wine, it's somewhat different. You let it age. But um, timing is critical. And for beauty and for passion, uh, youth tends to be uh, the best age. And so I do agree with um, Robert Herrick in To the Virgins that gather ye rosebuds while ye may. Gather ye rosebuds while ye may. On a side note, I've dated a lot of women who um, in their mid to late 30s are desperate because they, 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 it's like their biological clock is screaming at them and they want to have a child, they want to get married, and they've waited a long time because they wanted to establish their career or, or they were hoping to wait for Mr. Right. But now they're past their prime and they're past their prime in beauty so they can't really get a really handsome guy, um, usually, you know. When they're also past their prime to have babies, and so they end up just becoming cat ladies, all right? Not that that's wrong to be a cat lady, but, you know, gather your rosebuds while you may. And you know what? If you've passed your prime, just like I've passed my prime for jujitsu, just start now because it's better than later. Okay. My name is Ryan Freeman. Hope you like that poem, To the Virgins by Robert Herrick, 17th century poem. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.